Can I just ask a question? I've wondered Please. I've wondered this for years. I think I know my answer. Okay. Um, should I get my answer first? Well, I'd like you to ask the question. Okay, the question do, is... Do Lance and I need to answer? Do, do you feel like... The perception is that the media in our state, and maybe in general, covers Auburn differently than they cover Alabama. And some of that is More true. negatively or more positively? More negatively at Auburn, positively, positively at Alabama. Well, is that possibly because Auburn loses a lot of games and Alabama doesn't lose? That, that, is, that is the case for the last 17 now and yeah. a few games. But if Auburn fans would remember back when Alabama was struggling so much, I do think there was a lot of negative media coverage of Alabama. Oh, I got killed for calling Alabama University of Average for a long time. Yeah. But they were. They were U of A. They were very yeah, average, weren't they? And then they even line. got below that's... average. Yeah. And, and, and so that's what I think it is. I mean, it does seem like um, I call it micro freezing is what we're doing right now. Micro freezing. We are micro freezing. We are taking everything Hugh Freeze says <laughs> and putting it under a microscope. So I'm coining the phrase we're micro freezing okay. right now. Well, that's what happens when you well, lose. Well, I just say, I think we're in society, you know, when you see things that um, are negative, things that struggle. That, um, that's what it is. LC. Yeah. I mean, that's, you're, you're dead on. That's my yeah, point no, is if you, no. if there's blood in the water, if something, it's the easiest thing to cover is somebody that's struggling, right? Oh, no doubt. And no doubt. And, and like the only negatives that you've had with Alabama and Nick Saban, like, oh my God, you know, they won 42-10, but, yeah. you know, they missed some tackles. They had eight penalties. I mean, it's like you're trying to nitpick, I, you know, even yeah. a great performance. That's what it became. I would, I would say it is human nature for a reporter, especially in the world of social media. It's just human nature. That if he thinks the fan base is turning on a coach, he jumps on and turns too because right. you get less criticism that way. You like, try like, to ride the wave of whatever the fans are thinking. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not the best way to do your job. I'm just saying it's human nature because then I don't have to listen to the, oh, you're so negative. Why do you hate our school? Yeah. You know, then I get fans like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. That's, if, that's human nature. But if you're friends with a coach and the, the, you feel like the fans are turning and you – keep doing positive things for the coach, then what are you? Uh, you're a homer. You're a homer That's at that right, point. A homer. So, so these team sites are hard to manage, right? It's hard to be uh, legit. And then sometimes it's hard for us to, you know, because we know these guys. We know yeah, we know tough, Hugh Freeze. Yeah. We know Kalen DeBoer. We yeah. know Nick Saban. We know these guys. It's hard to say negative things. But we are micro-freezing <laughs> Hugh Freeze right now. Okay. Here's Hugh Freeze yesterday. Man, we have broke these two sound bites down. What's he doing? How is he saying this? Here's the first one. Here's Hugh Freeze. Our fan base has done their part, um, which makes not being five and zero very hard to swallow. When we certainly had our chances to to do that, um, I just my ask is to stick with us through the growing pains and uh, support our guys and efforts and our recruiting efforts uh, because the results are going to come. We're not that far off, and um, hope the. 25 recruiting class sees that and knows they have a chance to come in and immediately impact this program just like the 24 class is currently doing um, but building does take time um, I think you all are aware of what we inherited our AD has done a marvelous job of explaining that and he did to me before I took the job with um, the um, previous recruiting classes not being um, what you know, you need to compete at a high, high level and 57 transfers out um, in the previous three years before my arrival. So building takes time, but our process when complete will, is going to make everyone very, very proud and to wear the orange and blue. All right, hey, this is our horseshit moment of the day. <laughs> yeah. Who sponsors but, that? No, but I mean, just saying, honestly, like, okay, so Sonny Dykes in year one played for a national championship with TCU. And I think the numbers, as far as like transfers coming in and out, were much bigger than that. Lincoln Riley won 11 games. I know it wasn't a really good team, but they still won 11 games in year one. We talked to Hugh Freeze multiple times in the offseason and asked him about the difference from year one to year two. You've got to be able to make a jump. And for him to say 5-0, and oh, like you're 2-3. and three. If you were 4-1, and one, yeah, we might be able to give you that one. 
But man, we uh, we could have been five and zero coming out of this. No, you were two and three. Listen, you know what you are. I, 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 I know need what you to are. know when he, he is a micro freeze specialist right here. Uh, you no, no, that no, I well. like you, Freeze. Yeah. You guys know that. Yeah, he has been really nice to us. Um, I still think he's a good coach. I don't know what the hell's going on, but you, you there's no him. excuses. He needs to own one hundred percent of this. Don't talk about your AD painted the picture and how bad they were and what we inherited. You're getting paid a shit ton of money to turn this thing around, and you should be able to do it in year two. I I, I just need to know, and it's not just you, Freeze. It's Auburn fans too when is brian harson off the hook on this because there is a lot of stuff that gets blamed on brian harson and some of it might be true but I, at some point you got to look in the mirror and say he was the coach and we're past that now and this i, is I don't ever think brian harson do you guys really i mean it's hugh freeze's program he's been there long enough it's his program but i mean he's not wrong that the recruiting was bad but it's just like that so let me ask Auburn you this: Fans so. have used the whole Brian Harson thing for quite a while to excuse Hugh Freeze. Now it, it I think hasn't Auburn been fa- that long, dude. It's, I mean, it's been well, a year well, and have, a few games in conference. Uh, similar, similar situation. How bad was Tennessee when Jeremy Pruitt left it for Josh Heupel? Oh, it was bad. It was really bad. I mean, wouldn't you say it was equally as bad as Harson? What did Josh Heupel do? He went seven and six to eleven and two. Why? Yeah, the right quarterback. He went and got Hinton Hooker. Uh, yeah, he went and got Hinton Hooker. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? I mean, Hugh Freeze had every opportunity to get, you know, what by, he wanted. By the way, I remember when he got Hinton Hooker done, I was like, you think that guy's going to start at Tennessee? I really did because of what I saw with Virginia Tech. Yeah, right? but, but he Heupel, had one good year there. Heupel had an eye for a quarterback. I, mean, yeah. I think Heupel knows quarterbacks. I think we've realized that. I thought Hugh Freeze knew quarterbacks. And, you know, Hugh had an opportunity to, to, to address this, and he didn't. So that's not Brian Harson right there now. Yeah, and you I can't still, pin that on Brian Harson. And I don't want to pin this past loss on, you know, Peyton Thorne's coming to join us. Peyton Thorne played really well this past week. And I know the one thing that will get magnified is the pick six. Right. You can't have those. But outside of that, like, it wasn't quarterback play this past weekend that lost the game. It wasn't. It wasn't. One more from Hugh Freeze as we continue our micro-freezing segment. Uh, this was a follow-up to the opening statement he made when he talked about what he inherited. And uh, it went like this. Coach, you mentioned in your opening statement about what you and your staff have inherited here. Um, in year two, was the roster so barren and was the previous regime's job so poor in recruiting that fans shouldn't expect more than a two and three start when you have five home games to begin the year? Yeah, I, I, I won't comment on what happened before I was here. Um, the roster was what it was. Everybody can make their own determination on that, on how many people left and the, and the recruiting rankings and what was brought in. So you, you can look at that and make your own determination. Should the fans expect more than a two and three start? Absolutely. I mean, we could easily, like I said, in my opening statement, be sitting here being five and oh, and, uh, but we didn't get it done. And, you know, we can point to the coaching eras and we can point to the 11 turnovers and, and all of those things. It's a mixture and uh, it's our job to get it. We could point to our youth. And it's one thing to sit here and if I said, man, we just got our tails whipped and they were just better than us and deeper than us. And um, but I, and, I, and I'm not taking anything away from those teams. I, uh, they, they found a way to win the games, but we found a way to lose them in my mind. And that is uh, that's what's the hardest thing about setting here with uh, the two and three record. And that's on him. Like Mike Shula's final year, that 2006 team that Kynes took over, what, six and seven? There was a lot of cancers in that locker room. Saban comes in, first year was Rocky. Second year, undefeated in the regular season, on to the SEC championship. This is all on Hugh Freeze. All of it. Got to flip it around. And uh, the work's in process. I'll go back to SEC media days. When we had Brandon Marcello um, sitting with us, and I think it was it was one other person that had given us the information that, um, but I can't say his name because it was a source at that point. Uh, but he was not on set; he didn't say it on camera. Who was telling us how Hugh was not spending all his NIL money that was available? That they were working towards what year, year three. three? Year three. This that, is didn't your, make a whole lot of sense when people were telling no, me. No, this that. was it, this it, was on. This was on air. Yeah, yeah. Was Marcello said. did. Yeah, uh, Marcello's the one we were talking about. Oh, it was yeah. uh, it was Florida. Napier wasn't tapping into everything yet, and, uh, and then Marcello <laughs> said on air that it was it was uh, Hugh was doing the same thing that he was all planning for year three. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I mean, said, you're, you're, I said it then. I said that doesn't make a whole yeah, lot. Of Napier's sense, not going to be around now. So yeah. I mean, you you played with that. You got burnt. Napier's going to be gone. And look, I don't think Auburn's in a situation. And look, this is way premature, and I think Hugh Freeze is fine, should be, but he's got to take the 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 brunt of the responsibility here. Um, 
But I'll tell you what, man, if this thing, if if he's four and eight, how hot is the seat next it's year? It's very, yeah, very yeah. hot. I mean, that would be the first time, I, I can't remember how long it's been since Auburn's had four consecutive losing seasons. It just doesn't happen. And you've been at the helm for two of them if you're Hugh Freeze. And boy, I mean, that is an increasingly mm. and, and more again, likely possibility. Throw the number out. 1988 was the last time you had back-to-back 10 win seasons. There's a chance Missouri's about to have back-to-back 10 win seasons. Um, I will tell you, our friends at MyBookie has a, uh, a daunting uh, road challenge for Auburn ahead. MyBookie.ag, Brownie. Uh, last I checked, it was 24 and a half. I did not play it in Upset Alert. We'll get to that at 1030 Central time today in a little over an hour. But um, Auburn inside 24 and a half is a, is a play for me this weekend. Are you like Auburn inside the 24? Not to win the game. Inside 24 oh, and a half. I would hope not, not to win Inside the game. 24 and a half. Okay. Yeah, have fun with that. All right. Uh, Jim will explain to us why. Will you explain to us why? Uh, it's just a gut feeling that this football team plays a little, I mean, competitive yeah. within three touchdowns. Yeah, it's at that's, Georgia. 